Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to our first ever symposium on caves. Uh, my name is Dan Doctor. I am the current chair of the Virginia Cave Board, and we're here to talk to you today about the Virginia Cave Board and some of the work we do. I'm joined by Meredith Hall Weber, um, and uh, the two of us are just going to give you an introduction into the Cave Board and talk about the um, the role that we play in protecting caves and karst in Virginia. Uh, for those of you who don't know, the Cave Board was established by a mandate um, by the General Assembly. The uh, Virginia Cave Protection Act was first enacted on March 2nd, 1966. Then later in 1979, the General Assembly created the Virginia Cave Commission and uh, un thereby they strengthened the Protection Act. Um, the Act's main purposes were to protect cave resources from vandalism and degradation uh, and to protect cave owners' interests in their own property. Um, any violations of the Act are Class Three misdemeanors with fines of up to $500, but generally in the, in the history of the enforcement of the Act, most uh, penalties have come in the way of community service. Uh, the Cave Commission was renamed to the Virginia Cave Board in 1985. Um, all Cave Board members are volunteers. We are appointed to four-year terms by the governor. Um, many of us, like Meredith, are longtime cavers um, who are interested in promoting the education and conservation of caves and cave resources. Um, others on the Cave Board are professional geologists like myself and our colleague Bob Denton here shown next to Meredith. Um, we also have some academics. Um, uh, and some just a great group of people who are who are interested in in protection caves and and karst in in Virginia. Um, I work for the U.S. Geological Survey. Um, I'm a karst specialist with caves and karst in Virginia and across the country. But um, like I said, we have a whole host of others. Some of them shown here. Uh, Steve Lindemann, who works with the Nature Conservancy. Um, is uh, past, past chair of the Virginia Cave Board. And take it away, Meredith. Hi, okay, sure. I wonder how many of you have heard of the Virginia Cave Board before the symposium. I was five when the Cave Protection Act came into being. I was eight when I went into my first cave. You might know it, Luray Caverns, just over the mountain. In 1979, when the Cave Protection Act was strengthened, I graduated high school, started college at JMU, and went into my first wild cave. I was hooked. So the Virginia Cave Board used to do a lot of outreach, and they got away from it, not sure why, but over time and with enthusiastic new members like me and Dan, we've gotten more into doing outreach. For example, last year at the Blue Ridge Wildlife Center's Wild Fest in Clark County, the Virginia Cave Board had a booth. We've had displays at Grand Caverns during conservation weeks. Um, we were talking to you here today. Virginia, Cave Week is one of the major outreach projects that the Cave Board does. It started in 2000, was kind of sporadic for a while, but I'd say in the last 10 years or so, it's become an annual event. It used to be in October, then we changed it to April to encompass the week that has Earth Day. A year or so ago, we changed it to June to encompass June 6th which Congress said is now National Cave and Karst Day. So yay, June 6th is an important day because it's also D-Day. Um, we typically will pick a theme for Cave Week. Last year, we honored Dr. John Holsinger, who was a founding member of the Cave Board and a caver scientist who world famous, specialized in caves and their inhabitants, in particular amphipods. 
this year our theme was supposed to be the karst landscape and dan will define karst later um has to do with caves but um coronavirus kind of messed things up so um anyhow if you are interested in geology dan's going to give a really good talk on geology in the next segment of the symposium and if you're interested in biology amphipods and such will orndorf will give a talk to round out the symposium on things that live in caves so throughout Virginia Cave Week, members of the Cave Board give walks and talks like this one at various sites upon the Virginia Cave and Karst Trail. This trail is very similar to the famous Civil Wars Trail, which New Market's probably a part of, but the Cave and Karst Trail obviously has to do with caves and karst. Here's an example of a sign that we had made most of the sites on the trail have these nice signs um, so some of the close by sites on the trail are shenandoah caverns endless caverns Luray caverns you get the idea and most of the show caves in virginia are now open even though we still are in virus times so, but I do suggest you go see them. And some of the sites on the trail are free. For example, Rockland Park up in Front Royal and Hupps Hill in Strasburg. Hupps Hill in particular is a, a really cool part of the Karst Trail because it has an actual trail through the woods. You walk along, you can see small cave openings and other karst features. And while you can't go into the caves, you learn about them. So we have these brochures printed up thanks to the owners of Luray Caverns. And they, you can pick one up, a brochure at John Henry's General Store. And um, please do that. The, there's 25 sites on the trail. And one of the really cool things about the brochure is this checklist and even though Dan doesn't like to take credit he was the one who mentioned doing a checklist and everybody on the cave board loved the idea so you can keep a brochure in your glove compartment and when you stop by one of these cave and karst trail sites just check it off I um I only have one left to check off and I'm really excited but I really don't know when I'll be able to check it off but Got my brochure ready. So, um, Dan, it's now, oh, wait, I forgot. <laughs> the, the Virginia Cave Owners Newsletter is the one of the other major outreach things that the Cave Board does. And if you're a cave owner in the Commonwealth, you probably already get this, it looks familiar. We typically publish one cave, Virginia Cave Owners Newsletter a year, the VCON. And we mostly print it out because if you are a cave owner, you probably live in a place that doesn't have great internet service. Uh, but we do, we do offer it via email. We are not funded by the state, so we have to get grants for this. I mentioned we got a grant from the Robertson Association for the cave trail signs. We get grants from various places for the Virginia Cave Owners Newsletter. Um, the Cave Conservancy of the Virginias has been very good and we thank them um, for supporting the Cave Board. And now I think it's Dan's turn. Yes. All right. Thanks, Meredith. Um, as Meredith said, the Virginia Cave and Karst Trail uh, is available through a brochure, but if you can't get your hands on a brochure, you can always visit the website of the Virginia Cave Board. It's hosted through the Virginia Department of Conser Conservation and Recreation, uh, the DCR. And there you can see um, the same uh, sites and 
you, we actually have web links to the home pages of the individual sites, if there is one, uh, that are available along the trail. Uh, one of the more important things that we have done in the past few years is um, printing up uh, signs that we can post at all significant caves in Virginia. Um, the old cave protection sign used to say, this cave is protected by Virginia state law. And we updated it to say that all caves in Virginia are protected by state law, regardless of whether there's a sign or not. And uh, this has been a, a, a long-term effort. and. Uh, we, we are really pleased to, to say that uh, many, many signs have been posted all across the state. Uh, in addition to the Cave and Karst Trail effort and the signs, um, our main role is advising uh, state agencies and interested municipalities and private citizens even on issues of caves and karst. Um, to that end, we've put a few documents up on our webpage. Uh, three of them are here. Um, the first one on the left is a karst assessment standard practice. Um, that's meant to provide guidance to those looking to do new development in karst terrains. Um, and really it's just a, a, a list of things you might look out for and, and want to consider when developing in karst that um, may be uh, not something normally considered in developing on other types of, of substrate. Um, we also have a frequently asked questions document about the natural gas transmission pipelines that are being built across Virginia and how they may impact karst terrains and how that can be done, um, again, with best practices in mind. And uh, finally, we have a resident's guide to sinkholes. Um, I have to give credit to our Cape board member, David Eck, who really did a, a lot on drafting this document. And it's meant to provide just some baseline information to citizens. So if they have a sinkhole happen to open up on their property, or they suspect there might be some kind of ground subsidence occurring and they live in one of the karst areas of Virginia, this is a resource people can look to um, for some information on how to handle it and what to do. Next slide, please, Meredith. Um, really though, the main task of the Virginia Cave Board is to protect the natural, uh, the natural resources and the environments of caves and karst in Virginia. Um, these areas host a, a large number of, of rare or endemic species. And our very own Will Orndorff from the DCR will talk about cave life in uh, an, an upcoming presentation, so we hope you'll be able to check check that check that out as well on on the website, um, and uh, you will get a better understanding of how really precious the the caves and the the creatures that inhabit the caves of Virginia how precious they really are. Um, the landforms as well; they are also quite precious. Um, We've helped protect uh, certain karst features in, in conservation areas, such as this is the natural bridge in Lee County in an area uh, called the Cedars, which is a state uh, protected natural conservation area um, and has connections to the Daniel Boone Wilderness Trail. And I would like to give credit to our very own Steve Lindemann, who has been working tirelessly um, on efforts to help protect the caves and the, the surface environments in this particular area. Meredith? Okay, so one of the things that we've done as a cave board is advise other people. Uh, we've talked with cavers in Tennessee and Indiana, both cave rich states, about possibly forming a cave board there. I don't think that they ever did anything further, but Starting something like this probably takes a long time because we're through legislation and whatnot. But so the Virginia Cave Board essentially remains unique in the entire country. We're the only state that has an advisory board on caves and karst. Yay, Virginia. Um, so our members, we're, we're just here to help educate and protect caves and they're educate about caves and um, protect them and cars. So 
If you have any questions, please ask. There, you can see the, your, the email address down below this, at the bottom of this slide, vcb at dcr.virginia.gov. And you can ask questions or you can ask questions now. Does anybody have any questions? Okay, great. Thank you for uh, coming to the Symposium on Caves through the New Market Library. Thank you all, and we look forward to interacting with some of you or many of you next year during Cave Week, hopefully not from our computers. Yes, <laughs> hopefully it'll be live. <laughs>